this is Scott Bain, one of the instructors for Net Objectives. One of the classes that I teach is a test-driven development class, and an interesting question came up, and I thought I'd kind of share it with you. And it is, can a legitimate test be written when only an instance of a mock object is created? Uh, my, my kind of gut reaction was, well, no, because we don't test our mock objects. But actually, in thinking about it, I came up with kind of an interesting scenario. So I'll go over that in this brief recording. First of all, though, I should make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say a mock object. So imagine here we've got this thing called class under test, and it's got some kind of behavior. I'm just calling it behavior. And we want to test that. But we know that because of the way this is designed, that it's dependent upon this other class, which I'm just calling a service class. Well, if I test the class under test with the service class in place, this causes several different problems. One is that if the service class has a defect, it could cause the test to fail, even though the thing I'm testing does not have a defect, and this could mislead me. Uh, also, we would then potentially have a test which is also of the service class, I assume I would, uh, and it could be very easy then to make both of those tests fail together, which can be a problem as well. Also, I've set myself up to win here because the behavior method returns something that the test can test. Uh, what if it didn't? What if it had a void return and the only thing that method did was have some kind of effect on the service class? Well, how could I make sure in my test that it did the right thing? So all of these things are solvable using mock objects. Now, a mock object, uh, such as I'm showing here, is a direct uh, uh, subclass of the service class. That is not the only way to do this. Uh, there are obvious reasons why sometimes you can't or wouldn't want to do that. Uh, you might also think, well, even if you create another version of service, how do you get the class under test to use it instead? Uh, what if the method called service is not virtual? There's a whole bunch more to it than this, obviously. But this is a good, simple example of a mock. And what the test would do would be to create an instance of the service mock instead of service, uh, and then have the class under test be using that during the test of class under test, of behavior. This essentially would break the dependency only at test time. Another uh, advantage of this is that since the mock doesn't have the real behavior of service class, then if the service class has a defect, since we're not testing the class under test with it, that defect will not cause our tests to fail. This is called isolation. We're isolating these issues for testing. Um, and if it, it was a void return method, that was the problem, I could actually uh, create the mock in such a way that it can remember whether it got called and how it got called, and then after the interaction is over, the test could go and use these methods you see I've added to the service mock to be able to condition what it does and check to see what happens to it, and that makes a void return quite testable. Okay, so uh, again, a lot more to mocks than that, but uh, that's just a good example for what I wanted to talk about. Now, mock objects have been around for a while, and a lot of people have tried doing them in various ways, uh, and sometimes some objections come up pretty quickly. The first is, this is more work. We've got more stuff to do. We're writing the mocks as well as the service objects. And that also means that we're generating more output. We're having more files in the project. Uh, our source tree gets larger. We have to um, put more stuff into version control and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. Also, sometimes when people get kind of crazy with the mocks, we end up with these silly tests that end up not really being about anything because they're just, everything's mocked out and there's no actual behavior in the system. Uh, and, and, and after a while, it seems like, well, I've heard people say, you know, the problem now, we do so much mocking that I think I should change my title to mock object developer <laughs> instead of software developer because it seems like all I ever do is write mocks. Well, there are a lot of reasons why that happens, and we talk a lot about that in our test-driven development class, because usually if we do get to the point that we're creating so many mock objects it's become a burden, it's because we're not doing it right. But it does bring up this question that a student uh, brought up to me in class, which was the one I started with, which was, could a test ever be written such that the test is legitimate and not stupid, <laughs> but only a mock object is in its fixture? Now, i got to make sure we understand what I mean by fixture. That's a term we uh, typically use in TDD to indicate the instance or instances 
of something which are created in a test in order for the test to be conducted. Now typically that means an instance of the class you're testing, but sometimes it could be several instances depending on if there's more than one thing involved in the behavior that you're testing. So the question my student asked is, would it be possible to have a fixture for a test that only contained an instance of a mock object, no other objects at all, and yet the test is legitimate? And my first reaction was, well that's obviously an example of a very silly test because you're testing your mock object. Your mock object is part of your test, uh, so clearly you're just kind of chasing your tail here. Well, the exception to this has to do with when we put into our design abstract base types. For example, here the class under test is actually an abstract type with two different versions. I'm just calling them concrete version 1 and concrete version 2. Now, we might have done this because we've got some behavior which is varying, and we want to create different versions of whatever this thing is. But there's also some common stuff, and we want to use the base class to be a single point where the common stuff is implemented. This prevents us from having duplicate implementation in these two different classes. And if these two classes, concrete version 1, concrete version 2, are conceptually related to each other, which of course they would be in this design, or it's a terrible design, then it's quite believable that they would have some common state, common behavior, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's a very you know, advantageous thing to do. Uh, this is one of the reasons I kind of prefer abstract classes to interface types, because it's a real convenient way to put the common stuff somewhere. But the problem is that although it's very easy to test the two concrete classes here, because their varying behaviors would be unique, so I write a test for each one, as you can see here, how do I test the common behavior? Do I test it using one or the other of these uh, concrete version tests, because if I do, then I'm really testing two things in one place, kind of like the problem I had before with the class and the service. This, in other words, is a dependency, but it's a dependency introduced through inheritance, which is much harder to break. You might think, well, you should test the common behavior in both concrete version 1 test and version 2 test. But the problem then is I've got duplicate tests, and if the behavior breaks, then I've got multiple tests failing together, which is a, a really bad road to be on. Well, it's a real simple thing to solve if you just realize that the common behavior will also be available to a mock. So all I do is make a simple mock that really doesn't add anything. It's just one of the subclasses of the class under test. And in fact, uh, if it's a, a concrete type uh, that's descending off an abstract type, I would have to implement this varying behavior method. But I would probably make it a null operation. Because all I'm doing in this common behavior test is testing that common behavior. That's it. Now I've got three tests, which are about three completely different things. Uh, and there's no chance that one of them is going to cause the other to fail and I don't have duplication in my tests. So yes, the answer is you can have a legitimate test that only instantiates a mock. Of course, the reason is that the class loader is going to instantiate the class under test as well. Simply not done by the test. If you have any questions or comments or any further ideas of how this could be used, uh, we have a user group that we love to have discussions in. It's called the Lean Programming Group, uh, and here's the URL for that. So I would invite you to come and join us there and share your ideas, ask your questions, or uh, tell me why I'm wrong. Anyway, thanks a lot. This has been Scott. Thanks for watching this lightning webinar brought to you by Net Objectives. We're committed to equipping our clients with effective, business-driven software development methods so they can be more successful. Please let us know how we could help you. Visit us at www.netobjectives.com.